Hello, and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 2, Tutorial 15A, which will focus on sales and leaseback transactions under ASPE. There are four key objectives for this tutorial. The first will be to record the sale of an asset from the leasee to the lessor in order to be leased in a sale and leaseback transaction under ASPE. And that should include any uh, deferred gains and losses. The second objective would be to record the purchase of the asset for lease by the leasor from the lessee. Third, to review the calculation of the lease payments by the leasor and the present value of the minimum lease payments, the PV, by the lessee. And finally, to prepare any required journal entries to account for a sales and leaseback finance lease for the, both the leasee and the leasor under ASPE. This tutorial is based on the Fleetwood Inc. and Mac Limited. Uh, example, so please make sure that you have downloaded and previewed it. The first requirement will be to calculate the lease payment as determined by the lessor and prepare an amortization schedule for the lease. We'll get that out of the way now. For the lease payment and amortization table, remember we take the perspective to the lessor. We have a 15 year lease with a 6% implicit rate. The current market value, the fair market value of the building, $15 million, and you have to enter that as a negative, as a PV. And the residual value is zero, as stated in the data. You end up with a payment with your calculator in begin mode of $1,457,020. You can see the amortization table here. And then that gets turned into the amount to be capitalized by the lessee. So we take that payment. Again, we have 15N. The leasee is aware of the lessor's implicit rate. You put in a million four fifty seven twenty as the payment, zero future value, you compute the PV, and you'll end up at fifteen million. So moving along to our second requirement, now we're going to prepare the 2020 journal entries for Fleetwood Inc. That's the leasee to account for the sale and leaseback transaction, and we'll prepare the journal entry to record the 2021 lease payment. So the leasee's journal entries. We start with the journal entry for the sale. The leaseor is paying cash of $15 million to the lessee. So the lessee will debit cash for $15 million. The building has an original cost of $7.5 million. So we're going to credit that. The accumulated depreciation on the building is $3 million. So we have to debit that. And what we're left with in our journal entry is a credit amount to make a balance because we need debits to equal credits. So that's going to be a deferred gain on the sale and leaseback transaction. Then we will capitalize the lease and recognize the associated liability by debiting the building under lease and crediting the obligation under lease for 15 million. And then finally, we'll record the cash payment of 1,457,020 by debiting the obligation under lease and crediting cash. Then at the end of the year, at the 31st of December, 2020, we have a few journal entries to record. The first of which is depreciation expense calculated as the $15 million capitalized cost minus a zero residual because there's no transfer of title or BPO at the end of the lease term and divide by 15 years. So that'll give us a million dollars. So we'll debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation for a million dollars. Next, we have to accrue the interest expense at the end of the year. So we take our $15 million capitalized cost minus the first payment of 1,457,020 and multiply by 6% to give us $812,579, which will be debited to interest expense and credited to interest payable. And the last year in entry is to amortize that deferred gain on sale leaseback. So we take the $10,500,000 deferred gain and divide by the 15 year lease term to get $700,000. So we will debit the gain on sale lease back and credit depreciation expense. And yes, we're crediting depreciation expense here because the amortization of any deferred gain or loss on sale lease back is booked to amortization expense. So in the case of a deferred gain, it actually acts as a reduction of depreciation expense. And then on January 1st, 2021, we have to record the cash payment on the lease. So we will debit the interest payable accrual that was previously set up for $812,579. We'll credit cash for $1,457,020. And the difference can go to the obligation under lease of $644,441. 
The third requirement will be uh, to do this now from the lease source perspective to prepare all the 2020 journal entries for Mac to account for the sale and leaseback transaction. The company will, on January 1st, 2020, record the acquisition of the building from the leasee. So it's going to debit an account similar to something called, you know, building acquired for lease for 15 million, and it'll pay the leasee cash of 15 million. Also on January 1st, we have the leaseback part of the transaction. These are basically the same as the journal entries you would have seen for the lease or before. This is not a sales type lease, you could probably tell. The company is not manufacturing anything, pulling it from inventory and selling it where the fair market value is higher than the cost. So this is automatically a direct financing lease. We didn't talk about the lease criteria, but at this point you should be able to assess them. So we will debit the lease receivable for the calculation of $1,457,020 times 15 years, right? There's no residuals, so $21,855,300. Then we will credit the asset for the lease. So basically, it goes into this building lease account and then comes out of that account. And then the difference of uh, 6855300 is the under interest income. At the same time, also on January 1st, the leasing makes its first payment. So the leasor will get a cash for 1057.20 and credit the lease receivable. Uh, and then at the end of the year, 2020, the uh, leaseor will debit the under interest income and credit interest revenue for, it happens to be the same amount as the leasee because the same 6% rate is being used. So uh, 812,579. Let's now wrap up with some key points to remember. In a sale and leaseback scenario, under ASPE, the leasee sells the building to the leaseor with any gain or loss recorded as a deferred liability or asset. Both of those are deferred and amortized into income over the depreciation period, basically offsets or added to depreciation. As always, the leaser calculates the payment. The leasee takes the payment and calculates the present value using the appropriate interest rate. Again, under IFRS, the lease rate used by the lessee is the leaseor's implicit rate because it is determinable. ASPE takes the lower of the two rates, assuming that the implicit rate is known. If the leasee does not know what the leaseor's rate is, then you have no choice but to use the IBR. And the leasee capitalizes the present value and sets up an offsetting lease obligation, and the amount capitalized cannot exceed the fair value of the asset at inception. And that concludes tutorial 15A on sales and leaseback transactions under ASPE. We hope you found it informative.